Hey everyone, One Piece Chapter 1112 just came out, and you know what that means. It's time to analyze the paneling. I hope the break weeks didn't drive you all too insane. I mean, we already have One Piece back, so it can't have been too bad. I really enjoyed the paneling of this chapter. It's got some great examples of how Oda panels huge attacks, and it showcases the visual storytelling One Piece is rooted in. So let's get right into it. Before we get to the big action pages, I did want to quickly highlight the opener. Every panel of this page directs the eye, from the angle of the flames, to the marines, across the speech bubble position directly in our path, and then down to the pacifistas. It finishes by aligning with Venus Jero's blade in the direction he's moving in. As always, paneling matters everywhere, not just in the big action sequences. And now to spend the rest of this video talking about those big action sequences. The clash between Frankie and Red King looks pristine, and it's because the setup is as careful as the payoff. They're at a diagonal angle, not only to direct the eye to where it'll start the next panel, but to put Frankie in the dominant position. His fist is pulled back further than Red King's, making it feel like he's putting more weight behind it. The blank background gives it a great hanging in the air, calm before the storm kind of feel, giving tension that's ready to resolve in the next panel. Also, I really like how Frankie's speech bubble sneaks under Red King. It's a neat way to convey that for the entire time Red King is talking, Frankie is saying, STRONG! After the eye reaches the speech bubble, it immediately goes diagonally down with Frankie's punch, with some beautiful flow. The way the eye travels around the page perfectly matches the arc of Frankie's punch. Red King has been hanging around in the background for a while, with his goofy long neck just being there. But now that part of his design is being used to emphasize the impact, adding more directionality and stretching its full distance. You can't get this with a normal neck. Who else but Oda thinks of things like this? Up next, we're going to talk about Jupiter inhaling. I gotta say, I hate it when this happens to me. But Oda does a great job of drawing it. He knows how to use shape language and imagery to convey things that are difficult to show visually. Before we even see Jupiter, it sets up a spiral shape with the clouds in the sky. The really clever part is that as the eye goes down into the second panel, it also moves in that spiral motion, both being baited by the curved lines and taking that path by necessity to read the speech bubbles. The panel after that works similarly, and uses a zoom out to show the large-scale effects of the attack we now understand. But the real standout of the page is Luffy's attack, starting from the narrow panel of him. Small and tight panels are great for setting up the feeling that something's about to burst outward, like a spring under tension. And that's exactly what we get, Luffy bursting outward in the next panel, in the direction the eye traveled up to see him. The next few panels have a nice rhythm between close-ups and distant shots. They're also a good example of how every panel should contain information that develops what was shown in the last. First we see Luffy going somewhere, then we see what he interacts with, then the start of the effect, how he feels about it, and finally the full effects of the attack itself. While it's not quite to the level of matching Frankie's swing, the way the eye travels across this page has a sort of there and back kind of flow. We go all the way out, and then come back in with the attack, giving a sense of resolution. And that matches how Luffy went out to the left and then sent back an attack to the right. The attack itself uses concentric circles and radial lines to emphasize speed and impact, as well as emphasizing Luffy's position. The contrast between Jupiter's body and the rest of the panel also keeps it easy to read, draws the eye to the right, and enhances the sense of perspective, with how Jupiter stretches into the foreground even past the panels on the right. And it should go without saying how visual and physical the choreography is, to use a building to clog up Jupiter's vacuuming mouth. Jupiter's body is also used similarly to Red King's neck, where the length gets stretched out and pushed back to emphasize the impact of the attack. This lets Luffy's side of the image control more space, while Jupiter is pushed to the edge. What actually happens when you don't allocate the majority of space to the attacker? Well, we can see that on the next page, as Luffy's Gear 3 punch controls a pitiful amount of space compared to Warkiri's face, which isn't warped, bent, or moved at all. This one compositional mix-up perfectly conveys that Gear 3 attacks just don't have the necessary power for opponents like this. I love how creative Oda is with his visual storytelling. It's very cartoonish to express pain with a giant throbbing hand, or to show Luffy's recovery by having him go from a withered old man to a buff strongman. 
It doesn't fit every manga's tone to do this, but it makes it a lot more engaging to read, compared to if we got the same facial expressions and body language without the exaggeration. One Piece is a visual story, even down to subtle beats like Saturn's claws creeping up over the ledge, which is a great cliffhanger for the next chapter. And to end off this video, let's talk about the panel that parallels that one. The striking imagery of Venus Juro. The contrast is harrowing, with how the black clouds of his body blend with the rest of his form and make his presence feel ethereal. His pupilless eyes behind his glasses make him seem inhuman, and the lighter, more scratchy shading lower down makes it feel like that part is being blocked by the smoke as he emerges out of it. The alignment of angles subtly adds to the panel. Bonnie's staff, Frankie's body, Atlas's arm, and even the leg of the fallen giant are all aligned one way, while Venus Juro's blade and scabbard are aligned to a contrary angle, integrating the conflict into the composition. That's all I have to say about the paneling in this video, but have you ever wanted to hear more? Do you want to get full, unfiltered thoughts on the paneling of every page in the chapter? If so, then you can subscribe to my brand new Patreon or channel memberships. As of this video being released, I've just put up a patron and member exclusive post with everything I can think of to say about Chapter 1112's paneling. And for 2 bucks a month you can get this alongside every video, or if you just want to support the channel in a better way than watching ads. Patreon link is in the description, and I think YouTube puts a membership button under the video, you'll find it. And if you aren't interested, or if you aren't in a financial position to throw money to a YouTuber, then feel free to keep it to liking, commenting, and subscribing.